So we're live right about now? We're live right about now. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to the CypherCast. It is Thursday, November 1st, and we are doing CypherCast episode number 24. I am Danny, and I am today joined by the most wonderful people in the world. Uh, we have Jim Ryan. Hello! <laughs> and Andrew, love! Hey, how's it going? What's everybody been up to? Uh, we missed you terribly last time. Uh, I you guys. So I just got to tell you why I wasn't here. For all fairness, I was going to see At the Gates and Behemoth. Um, At the Gates is a band I've wanted to see since I was like in high school. So it's like, oh, they're from Sweden. And then uh, Behemoth is some great black metal. So I'm cool. sorry. No, it was wasn't once in a lifetime stuff, you know. <laughs> gotta go. It's gotta be done. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. And uh, it's uh, I've been mostly just... Um, I've been trying to get a hold of this whole streaming life balance thing uh, that's been going on. <laughs> juggling juggling all these various games and then trying to figure out how to do uh, the thing that's supposed to be the day gig at the same time and just kind of like just uh, mapping it all together, trying to trying to figure that out. Still 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 finding my balance there. <laughs> yes. Well, it's a tough one, that gaming world, uh, real life stuff. Bad I know. I know. Tough. I am playing in like a, a monthly uh, a monthly D and D game at like in front of people at a person's house, uh, which is cool. Um, oh, we're doing uh, we're doing Curse of Strahd, um, and uh, I'm also uh, still playing in it's sort of a it's every other week sort of sci-fi thing in uh, Rosette Diceless over at the oh I'm playing over at the uh, the with the uh, the de the developers actually <laughs> they're they're local so. Uh, we just sort of helped them play test, and we've been we've been just continuing the game since we since the play test is over, but we're still playing, so that's uh, been a lot of fun. Oh. Cool, great, okay. yeah. Uh, what about you, sir? So yeah, old meat grinder is one of my favorite things in the world. <laughs> oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, hold on! You guys talk amongst yourself for a second. What's up? Ah, ah. So I am um, still uh, plugging away, trying to trying to find my own work life balance of 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 things with. Uh, I'm a, a den leader for a bunch of uh, tiger cubs, so uh, that's you know got, got some got some cub scout things going on with my son and what So cool. it's been uh, it's been interesting doing that and uh, and still trying to run two games at a time. So and keep working line and you know I have to you know continually try to sh shove that out. You know, get away work. I don't want to do with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be nice. Home so. now. Yeah. Now, now that they know I can log in at work, so from home. So now they're like, "Oh, can you do some more?" Yeah. Oh, and you know, there is a chance. It is. It is a a um, uh, growing, growing slightly greater. I don't know. I wouldn't call it a, a slim chance. It's it's a fairly good chance that my uh, gaming group that I was running Deadlands for, uh, that we were playing for like ages, might finally be getting back together. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. And they, apparently, they want to pick back up. So uh, I'm just uh, gotta gotta go back and look back at the books and figure out kind of what I want to what I want to do with that. But that that might actually be happening very soon. See, my my problem is there's too many games I want to run. That's my yeah, problem. Yeah. Is like I've got three different games. I'm like I really want to run this, but I'm already running two games. I'm like how can I can I fit another game in my schedule somehow? And it's not even that. It's the prep time for the games. Like. Finding the time to play, all right. Finding the time to prep, not so good. Andrew, are you playing at the table? Because like I yeah. run games online, and the prep is so much more as opposed to. Oh, let's see. Let's see. I I'm running like Tomb of Annihilation, which to me requires no prep whatsoever. Um, so that's great. But I'm running also uh, Star Trek Adventures, and that requires a lot of prep. So that's the one I'm running at the table. That's just, you know, just just eating my time away every free time I'm like all right let's see what's gonna happen here mm. so uh, we've been pro we've, we're in the middle of our second season almost done with our second season and just got the captain fired or demoted um one of my players uh got demoted uh, big plot story but anyway but the, the the thing is it's it's been uh it's, it's been i think about 25 sessions and i'm just running out of story like how do I, it's like cool. gotta go find some episodes of Star Trek to go watch. The problem is, is all my players have seen everything. I haven't seen much of anything, so I'll bring a storyline to the table, and they're like, "Oh, this is like this thing happened in T uh, TNG," and I'm like, oh, 
Okay, yeah, sure. It's like that, I see, guess. See, now you need to just go to other TV shows, like just start adapting old episodes of The Rockford Files or something like that. And oh, yeah. No, <laughs> I'm stealing that. from other games. I'm mean, like, all right, give me all the Coriolis adventures you can. Here we go. Let's steal them. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's what I'm still. Oh, Firefly published adventures. Let's go look. What can I steal plot wise? So nice. it's, been, it's been good, though. We've been having a lot of fun with it. So. But it's it's a crunchy game. It's a little bit more than I can handle. More than crunchier like. than Traveler. I didn't never play Traveler, so that was like a big old uh, bucket of crunch. Mm, yeah, I mean it's not. I wouldn't say it's crunchy. It's about as crunchy as like Edge of the Empire is. Um, that kind of system, but it's more of it's it's just a lot of you got to figure out a trekking and plot line that makes sense. You can't just they're not you know it's not a sandbox game. It's not a, you know, let's go see what happens. It's like, you have to have a plot. I have to have a storyline that's going on the players interact with. So I can't, the players, I'm having a lot of trouble. Like, I'm trying to get my players to go like, all right, what's the B plot? What's going on in the ship? I'm trying to get them sort of come up with their own kind of like story interactions with their characters. But trying to get them involved that way has been really like, no, they want to sit down and be, you know, run through an episode of TV show. They want you to do the work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're there for now. Yeah, yeah. But, all right. Anyway, <laughs> enough about other things. What's going on? So it's, uh, it's that time of year, a holiday season, and uh, Monte Cook Games has this really cool little holiday gift guide and gift idea. So I want to tell all about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, uh, they, they did this last year and the year before, yes? Mm -hmm. Yep. Excellent. Good. I'm remembering that correctly and have not been transported into an alternate reality. That's helpful. No. Uh, it's just occasionally that happens. Uh, <laughs> so this is the uh, 2018 holiday gift uh, they're doing that's running through uh, December 26th. Um, it's, you can, uh, it's a five dollars. Let's see. What is it here? Let me actually read this thing. Um, you, can, you can make a donation and you get and uh, make a five dollar donation and uh, you can add the gift to your shopping cart. It doesn't cost you anything, but you get to pick one of the three charities that Monte Cook Games has put aside: um, the American Civil Liberties Union, uh, Dogs for Better Lives, and Operation USA. Uh, so, not costing you anything, they're going to donate. That's pretty Great. cool. Great, because I do know a couple of people that I need to get a copies of the new Cor new Monero core books too. So that's kind of what I've been thinking about for some so, some Christmas presents. So yeah, <laughs> cool. I mean, you can do all your Christmas shopping right there for the kids. No thanks. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yes. I think we've already picked up. Uh, I'm a guide. That's a Christmas present coming out. So. Oh, or no, it's uh oh monsters is what we're getting for Christmas. So. Uh oh monsters, so cute. Oh my gosh. So that's definitely something to be checking out. Um, we have some announcements, too. Speaking of, like, happy time of year, we oh, yes. have some contest winners. Yes, we do. Woo! Speaking of the MCG store. <laughs> right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you want to do a little more Christmas shopping? We got your back. Because uh, we have three $40 gift certificates to go away that everybody announced last week. Uh, Scott was here. Scott Robinson. Yeah, last time, yeah. That one, right? Uh, telling all about it that the CypherCast Network has donated to wonderful people that follow and listen to us. Yeah, basically, uh, we, we went through all the entries, and uh, these these three that we're going to read out are the winners. And uh, we'll basically have instructions for you. If you hear your entry, then uh, uh, we'll, we will tell you what to do after we uh, go through the reading of these things. I, th that's the thing. is uh, We're going to read the entries. We have no idea whose they are. So yeah, if you hear your own... <laughs> As judges, we, we were able to, to we weren't given the names of the people that, yeah. that actually submitted these. Yeah. So we wanted to do a blind judging, and also it was just a thing where where you know we they don't want us to be influenced, what have you. So um, yeah, as we're we're reading these cold, we have no idea who these came from. <laughs> it's true. So we weren't so also want to buy us beers at a con. That's yeah. always good if you would like to do that. But, you know. And, and we, we, with that caveat in place that we weren't, able, we don't know who these people are. We don't know how they wanted things pronounced because there is a, quite a few names in here that um, are typical fantasy, put syllables and vowels together in weird ways. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of ninth weird. world speak going on here. I think yeah, probably. Exactly. <laughs> 
uh, so if we if we butcher the name of your city or or or, or a, a, a the name of a, a distinguishing feature of your city your, your location um we apologize um yes but, <laughs> Yes, in advance. We're, we're, so, do we want to do this just uh, just go down alphabetically, or we... uh, I'm sure. Bottom. Okay, I think I've got the first one, if uh, I remember correctly, as we decided before this, <laughs> which one we were doing. Yep. Okay, I picked one that had to do with drinking at a tavern. Just ah, so okay, know. excellent. Um, so this uh, this is the entry for a uh, a, a community called Anael. Um, a-N-N-A-E-L, um, located at the edge of the Steadfast on the border of the Pitharan Empire and Mathunis, Anael is the largest known community of Vargellans in the Ninth World. Why they've chosen to settle here is unknown, and as typical with the Vargellan outlook on life, the residents have little interest in finding out why and have long forgotten the story of the original founding. Uh, mirroring Vargellan biology, Anael is built around the concept of reforging. Every year the settlement is reconstructed and changes shape and size depending on the needs of the populace. This can change the settlement from a heavily fortified position with the buildings forming protective enclaves to a large farming com commune with widespread isolated pockets of population and anything in between. The population is estimated to be around 2,000 to 3,000 depending on the size of the settlement after reforging. Uh, some explorers have noted that in extreme situations, such as the approach of the Iron Wind, the settlement has been known to uproot entirely and reforge miles from its original uh, siting, where it was originally sited. Uh, the only constant to NAL is the central meeting hall, uh, referred to as the Crucible, which always has capacity for one-tenth of the population and will always be a dead center of the community uh, after the reforging is complete. Uh, there are some rumors about a tech vault uh, built into the crucible, filled with the collected Numenera of the population, although nothing has ever been located, and the Vargellans will simply ignore any inquiries regarding it. And so that is that entry. Congratulations. So, cool. Yeah, that one's uh, really cool. I like a lot of the ideas mm. with it. Um, the concept of the, you know a city that reforges itself to the needs of the settlement, I think, is a really cool idea. I, I was wondering though, if, if it, is it is the Virgilians the ones that reforge it, or is it something that does on its own? Is it a piece of Numenera itself? It's mm. a neat idea because I just I, I was reading that thinking just how it's either they found a place that's very much like them, or they <clears> just found some effect off of the the way that they exist that is just it is, is affected their uh, their location so much and it's it's neat to to have a settlement of them because i i had not heard of anything like that prior so that's really cool and based on the idea of the city is this the the origin of them you know is this where they're all from did the exactly. city create them ah, Ooh. So that's a that's an that's an interesting question because I mean it's you know they're noted as um, what uh, extraterrestrials originally mm -hmm. yeah correct it's so. interesting that um, well I mean you, you could do a lot of different things with it it's like what if they're not I mean that's you mm -hmm. know what yeah you do with that what if this yeah. this this whole city is actually a, a spaceship you know a vessel of some sort that's why it can move and uproot you know so like something from their home world maybe exactly yeah it's, it's got got a lot a lot of a lot of fun ideas there that you can play around with as a GM and sort of um, and, and have a lot of fun with. So yeah, the idea of a tech vault is also like, all right, let's go find Numenera, but then you might piss off the locals. So <laughs> that gives you plenty to play with, and uh, yeah. I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So the second one is um, Lingyet. It is spelled M L E N. Y E G T, Mlingyet. Um, and Mlingyet is approximately 1,000 people live in the town of Mlingyet, or rather on the creature of the same name. The humans have built their towns on the part of the Mlingyet that resides on the surface of the ground that covers roughly about three square kilometers, though it is unknown how far down the rest of the body descends. The humans and the Mlingyet have formed a symbiotic relationship. The creature grows edible and quite tasty fronds and pods on its surface, which the residents harvest for food. 
This is essential to the survival of all the plants and animals in the surrounding. Uh, this is essential to their survival, as all the plants and animals in the surrounding environment are highly toxic to humans. They are not toxic to the moon yet, however, and the townsfolk will feed them to it by way of a pool of liquid on its surface that dissolves and digests the animals placed in it. The outer perimeter of the Mignette is surrounded by three meter tall quills that deliver a poisonous sting to anyone coming in contact with them, thereby forming a formidable defense wall against potential predators. However, the idyllic symbiotic relationship is very delicate. When game animals are in short supply, the digestive ponds begin to rise, threatening the residents in, and their homes. The occasional storms slow the production of the food supply that the Mignette creates. This has forced the town to build many installations to stave off the harsh effects of the nature and ensure the survival of the Mignette and of their town. And of their town, excuse me. So I think, you know, other than the, the name is a bit hard to pronounce for me, you know, but I know everybody's tongue is not the same as mine, so um, hosting exchange is like Danish. Uh, you pronounce that really well. I can't do that. <laughs> can't make those sounds. But um, the, I want to go diving in that pool. It, well, that, that's that's the, the I find the fascinating thing about this is like, all right, uh, is there like a lottery system? Oh, I'm so sorry. The pool's got to you know overflow, and it's gonna you know. <laughs> problems so mm -hmm. we're gonna have to sacrifice somebody to the yet in order to get them digestive fluids so it's a heck of a thing to do with stomach yeah. acids it's very interesting it's very yeah. interesting well, i thought that's a really like cool idea it's like all right so you got this town of people that are like you know have this lottery system that the players are or, or they just capture people in the surrounding areas like the players and say i'm sorry you have to be our sacrifice yes because food is sparse here Oh no! We I want there to be some this creature does <laughs> some kind of artifact that uh, protects you from it, so you can actually explore it at one point. Oh, dive into the pools and find out what's down there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm just curious about a couple of things. Um, one of which is where this thing is, mm. um, and does it move? Um, because there there are a few different ways you can play with this, right? I mean, this could just yeah. be a thing that's tromping around the beyond somewhere, or, or yeah. beyond the beyond. Um, it could be in the ocean. It could be a thing kind of like an aspidoculone, um, which are this, okay. like the giant sort of um, uh, sea, mo sea monster that looks like an island from a distance, basically. Gotcha. Um, that kind of thing. And so this would could be something yeah. like that. A giant uh, starfish with a pool in the middle of it. You yeah, know, so yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just sort of seeing them so, to a certain extent in preparing for these uh, times when, you know, they get inundated to like mm. maybe building their uh, trying to get their buildings up on stilts or something like that for uh, for times when it uh, when flooding starts. So there's like a flooding season of some kind. <laughs> something that's resilient to acid and stomach bile. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I wonder how the place smells. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a good oh, point. Oh, yeah. Too. There's got to be. <laughs> I think to, to live there, would you have to be like completely anismatic? Would you just basically yeah. not be able to smell anything? Or uh... <laughs> what about the bog of eternal? Open sand? pools of bile yeah, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, because it's weird. Like, so do, would this thing have its own, um, just sort of hunting, hunting, gathering cycle, as it were, or it, where it's like it, it feeds itself in some fashion, or is it dependent entirely on the residents? Because. <laughs> It's uh, those are two different, very different ways that that'll affect how that uh, how that goes. Uh, that that's that's kind of like it moved around. You know, when I first read it, I thought, okay, it feeds on things it runs into. But then then reading it again, it's like, no, no, they feed it. So um, yeah, if they don't have any good hunters, then, then yeah, it becomes a problem for the town. There are a lot of things, a lot of stories you can get out of this because but, I mean. If they're if it's entirely dependent on them, for example, um, how you, you've got how long before um, you know how much life does it have left, right? <clears throat> and if it gets sick or if it dies, um, how, how do they deal with that in that community? Because then they're they're not going to have any food anymore because they got to rely on harvesting yeah. that stuff. Yeah, so that, that's a good point too. Hmm. There's there's a lot they could do with it. There, there is a lot you could do with this. 
Yeah, I, I like this one. I thought this one was really, really creative because he had a lot of ideas with it. That, it looks that like could... a flying creature. I'm just microscopic, and you're all just little, like, little <laughs> Oh, what if we're all inside a snow I'm globe? I'm not a nihilist, really. <laughs> Third. Uh, it's it's human era. Who knows? All of those things are possible. They are. They are. Absolutely. Uh, and third, and certainly not least, is Zibbleton. Maybe I got it right. So, welcome, uh, Peregrine, to the beyond in the wandering walk. The Riag will offer you no succor and shelter no longer. Tread cautiously. What lies ahead lies Zibbleton, the first and greatest way station of the Wanderer. There, cresting from the horizon, you see the hulking remains of the once terrible Dread Destroyer, bested single-handedly by the great Zibbletaurus, nano legend, and brought to the knee here by the base of the Embred Peaks. Rest easy, traveler. Make merry. Spend a few chi- chi- Oh my gosh! Spend a few shins at the dreadful tavern. <laughs> I haven't even been there yet, and I can't speak. Visit the commissary and buy a zib-approved charm pr- to protect you from the ever-present threat of the iron wind. Rent cot or slab or bed and shore up your reserves before you make your way to the mouth carns. But do not miss a visit to the eminent shrine of the founder, Zibbulatorus himself. Thrill to the fates of the founder and his alcotes. Alcotes, I can never say that word. The destroyers are the faithful party's journey far beneath the surface of the earth. Discoveries of ancient Morlash civilization near corruption at the hands of the malevolent Moskos. And finally, the ruin of the Sentinel itself. Take a tour of the wreckage and seek a blessing. Donations and courage before you travel on. And then I think they've got like three sign, uh, three signposts down there. Yeah. <laughs> Do they signposts? I think that's what they're supposed to be because you've got like yeah. the up arrow and the left arrow and the down arrow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, whoever created that, forgive me not being able to speak and read out loud, but I love it. <laughs> I, I just like the way this is written, like a travel brochure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling that this is this is like this is just just bit my thinking that that. Uh, Zibble Thorador is actually, you know, somebody's player character, and this is might be something that that we <laughs> did. They're like, all right, <laughs> killed the once terrible dread destroyer, and so no, <laughs> that's perfect. All right, which... about, you know, here, here's here's our campaign in a nutshell. All right, don't miss it to the the, the um, you know, which one of you was Zibble Thorodos? Which one of you? Uh... <laughs> Malevolent, malevolent Muzik or Muzik. Yeah, that, it's actually it's very interesting because there is like this this whole background <clears throat> that this uh, just immediately in Orlash civilization, the near corruption at the hands of the malevolent Mosklak. You know, who's that person? What happened there? Like, yeah. you can, you know, ha- having a, a city that has a backstory and a history is really cool. So I really like that idea. Um, it, you know. When I did uh, the uh, Ninth World's Chronicles, when I first started that, the city that they started off was like, the, I started with the the death of the hero of the town. And so I had all of these things listed that he did. I had no idea what they meant, but I was just like, it's listed five things. And so I thought that, you know, I seen this, that somebody else is taking that kind of same approach, I think it's really cool. So. Yeah, totally. I want, I want to know about these Dread Destroyers. Yeah. So do I. I want to know what's in the mouth cairns. I'm a little concerned. <laughs> Maybe it's the mouth of the creature from the last world you just read. Yeah, it's entirely possible. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to link all three of these together. <laughs> we can find a way. See, then, then it also, because of how it's written as, as a travel guide, it also has the it has the, the cheesy Chosky-ness of like, um, like south of the border. And you're going to get there and it's like nothing. No, very cool. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> like they built it up to be this big thing, you know, as a signpost here. You know, <laughs> the border seventy miles ahead, and you get there, and it's like this dinky little thing. So yeah, so, I, I, I've been I've been to that, and uh, I, I think that uh, I think Zibbleton is probably I can guarantee better. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take much to be better than that. Yeah. Maybe in the you know in the mid to late sixties, south of the border was a cool place, but <laughs> not so. Much. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think this has got kind of got that feel of it, like that that kind of like 
hype this place up and you're going to be like, oh, it's just a way station. It's a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> down in on the side of the road. <laughs> the shrine is like in one room. <laughs> I, I still think there's a lot of things you can do with that, though. That's probably uh, yeah. yeah. How I'm sure it's like, it's a lot of fun. You, you get a lot of play, ways you can take it. So yeah. Sure. Thank you to all our, you know, people that entered and uh, congratulations to the winners. So please just reach out to us somehow. You know, we yeah. all have Twitter handles or. Well, I, I actually did get instructions from Scott oh. on uh, how to how, how we want to kind of handle this. Um, so if you heard your entry read, um, just send an email to the same address as before. And that is ccn2community at gmail.com that's charlie charlie november the number two community at gmail.com uh, use the email address when you do that that you want to use to receive the 40 dollars gift certificate uh, so probably whichever address that you use on the mcg store um, if you're not using the same address that you did when you sent in the description of your community be sure to include that address somewhere in the body of your email so that we'll be able to match it up to your entry and uh, congratulations. If you heard your entry one, you are a winner. Yay! Yay! Thanks, everybody, for your, uh, for your support and, uh, you know, participation. Um, so that, that's really cool. I'm, um, I'm, you know, we had a yeah. lot of fun, fun time reading this. We finally so. did a contest. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Excellent. So uh, we have an actual team. prize. Yay! Yay! Um, Jim, the Gen Con, uh, the 2018 audio, that's uh, coming up there? Yeah, oh yes. The, uh, I, I have this recording and I actually put this on the list to hold myself accountable. Uh -huh. um, mm. And that uh, I have not had a chance to get to it because life. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to try by the, uh, the end of the year to also, in addition to this episode, get out the, uh, the uh, MCG panel from Gen Con 2018. Uh, the, the Gen Con of this year, I did. I was there. I recorded the panel. Uh, I was not at Gen Con. What the heck am I talking about? I'm sorry. I've gone crazy. Um, let me change the. Yeah, I, I, I was like, I know. I was not there. Dragon Con is the Dragon word I'm trying Con. to use. Yes. Okay. Now, now that I now that I remember where I, I was, like, wait a minute. Were you there? No, I was not there. Um, so yes, my apologies. Uh, for uh, then just sort of sidetracking everything. At Dragon Con, there was a panel uh, that uh, Dragon Con in Atlanta, Georgia, I was there this year. Um, there was a, uh, you see, things have been so crazy, I have no idea what city I'm in at any given time. <laughs> uh, I was at Dragon Con this year and where the MCG did a panel and uh, I recorded that and I'm going to get the audio for that out uh, hopefully by the end of the year. I'm trying to just put, I put that on the schedule to hold myself accountable for that and uh, uh, we will... Uh, so be looking for that uh, if you're if you listen to the podcast um, in that f same feed uh, that is on uh, at uh, cyphercast.net uh, just go to that and hopefully by the end of the year that'll be in there I, I cannot remember for the life of me what they talked about I think it was probably something related to your best game ever um, <laughs> so it's been a little while <laughs> I'll be excited it's, to find out along new. with everyone else as I go back and listen <laughs> It'll be all new to us by then. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of a uh, con, some of us are just off the heels of uh, PAX Unplugged. I saw a lot of awesome Monty Cook Games people there, uh, people that I've seen at Gen Con and met, and that was really cool. So I think we wanted to talk about a little bit of what we've been doing with the Cypher system and Monty Cook Games at cons, what we've been running, uh, what we've seen run. What we plan to run. Yeah. Yes. There's various ideas, ideas for running things. Yes, yeah, I'm just going to chat about that for a little bit. Yeah, I think I think we cool did it. Uh, I I kind of uh, uh, had had uh, requested uh, we we kind of do a slightly more chill topic this month just uh, because of all the craziness that's been going on, and uh, so we're just going to kind of uh, uh, just chat a bit about that. Um, but uh, so Danny, you got to go to PAX, which is like the big thing that just happened. PAX unplugged. Yeah, yeah I did. Um, so I was super bummed out. I was coming off of being sick for like two weeks of bronchitis, so I couldn't run any games. So my GM soul was crushed while I was there because I wanted to run some demos for MCG and I had a good Cypher system game in my pocket. But I was very lucky to get to play for a little while with Charles Ryan, who uh, I got to pre play with last PAX Unplugged, who ran an awesome horror game that year. 
sadly I couldn't see through the full game because I was not 100% myself yet. But what I had was really awesome. Yeah. So it was a sci-fi, it was going into horror kind of game. And we started out knowing nothing about our characters. All we needed to do was pick a focus and a type. And we took it from there. And it was really cool because you spend all this time on, you know, character creation, thinking of a personality, uh, your, your descriptor, how you can you know, mold your character, and you're coming into it with nothing. And it was really cool to make your character with everybody else at the table and mold them and their personalities around what everybody is doing. And so you're playing off how people are reacting to you. And so you're adjusting with a character you know nothing about. Mm. And it was wicked cool to see relationships develop at the table, um, hostilities, and it was really fresh. It was it was awesome. Neat. So thank you, Charles Ryan, for running that. And uh, definitely want to piggyback on that and do that sometime. So you started out, well, how much information did you start out with? Nothing. Nothing. We knew our type and our focus. But, so my question is, name? did your characters remember things or were okay so it was like a amnesia wake up situation yes. All right. i think this is a scenario charles is working on uh, for something other than this so i don't want to give too much um Gosh. away on what we actually did but yes we woke up with no memories we weren't even supposed to put a name down in the, the paper because we didn't know our names and what kind of uh, what kind of just if you can say uh, what kind yeah. of setting was it that uh, you were so waking it, up in it was appeared to be like a sci-fi slash horror setting Cool, cool. So like, it was. yeah. So that in that genre. Okay. So was it like present day sci-fi or futuristic? Or it was. It was present day. It seemed. Cool. Uh, it, it seemed pretty present. Neat. Cool. Uh, advanced a little bit. So no, a little bit further Ooh, ahead. Okay. But definitely like Earth style. Gotcha. You're not in some space station or not coming out of cryo or anything like that. Yes. So, okay, I got you. I that sounds so. really cool to me because in some ways it it reminds me a little bit. There's, uh, I. <laughs> I understand games in terms of referencing other games, so forgive me for uh, for diverging for a moment. But uh, it reminds me a little bit of a game called uh, A Penny for My Thoughts, I believe it's called, um, uh, written by Paul Tevis, uh, which you start out with no information about, uh, uh, very little information about who your characters are. And you've all taken this, uh, but you know, this drug that allows you to read each other's minds. <laughs> and you slowly are able to pull memories out of sort of it's a group therapy session where you're pulling memories slowly out of each other, sort of figuring out uh, where you'd been and what you'd done. Hmm. So stuff like that sounds cool. It reminds me of another one, actually, that I'm I, it's, it's on the tip of my, my, my mind what that one is. But I've forgotten that one appropriately enough. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's neat seeing something like that in. Uh, in, in in cipher. So how did, did did that did that work? How did that work with it? it? Was like only sort of filling in pieces as you went. Yeah. So if we wanted to do something, we're like, yeah, I think I have a skill for that. I remember something like that. So, but then you know you're stuck with it. you can't be changing them out as you go. I don't say stuck with it, but you know what I mean. Like, so Neat. you're making things up on the fly to make your character relevant. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun um, when I got to be there. And it was, it was different. So, you know, it's like one of those fresh things like, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? And played with awesome people at the table. They were great role players. So it was, it was a hell of a lot of fun. You know, Charles last year ran a zombie horror game, which I, I love running horror games with Cypher um, with the horror mode and up and up. Um, you, as you flip horror mode, every time you um, roll a fail, you do the horror dice and you turn it up a mode. So I roll a one. Uh, you know, free jam intrusion, and then you flip the dice to a two. So now it's a one or a two, and then you flip it to a three. Now it's one or two, or three is a GM intrusion, and it just escalates. And Charles, we ran till four in the morning. The packs pray for this because we were just so into the game, and it was wow. so crazy. Yeah, I'm sorry. I missed that. I was in my hotel with my son. So, why is that for time? So nice. We were going to make it to packs this time, but it just, you know. Life got in the way, and we had to sort of back out, you know, about a month month prior to PAX. So yeah. we want to get back up there. Philadelphia is a fun city, so we want to definitely go back and do it next year. So mm -hmm. that that's the plan. So but we'll get back. And we'll definitely be seeing you next year then. Speaking of uh, other cons, well, I guess we weren't. I'm, I'm four months <laughs> yeah. away. Woo I'm four Oh, you just talk about uh, stuff, you know. So I was talking, you know, other cons that I might want to go to next year, we have Mace. How did you do Mace? Uh, you've been doing Mace for many years, haven't yes. you, Jim? Yeah, they, I've, been, uh, I've been running oh. games at Mace for longer than I can remember. Uh, <laughs> for time immemorial. 
uh, stretching back, you <laughs> low this low this decade, um, better part of the last decade, um, and uh, I was uh, I, I, this year was no exception. Um, I ended up running a cipher game this time um, as a thing, and uh, it was actually now it's a it's a scenario that I've mentioned on this show before, uh, mm. but it's the first time I got to do it in full at a table. Um, so that was really good. And what it is was what it was was it's the so there is a uh, a world that I have de- uh, described mentioned here before as uh, sort of a Da Vinci punk type thing. Um, that's, uh, it, it's a sort of a, uh, restoration era science fantasy type thing, um, with, uh, you have, uh, don't really have magic per se, but you have, uh, humans and, uh, elf-like creatures and orc-like creatures and gnomes and things of that nature, um, but you, and it's not the, as different species, but, and you have, uh, sort of beings with psychic abilities, um, and, uh, sort of you, the, the tech is around sort of 1700s ish, uh, and you have alchemy to a certain extent, and then you have ornithopters, things like that. So it's kind of, uh, all in that vein. Um, and, uh, this is a, this is a game that, uh, that I have run online before, uh, years ago, Andrew played in it. Um, also actually Scott played in, I think I might've even... I think I might have mentioned it last episode, just given the number of times that I mentioned it. <laughs> Forgive me for mentioning it again. Uh, but uh, the thing with it is, the, the where that's different at this point, is that I actually have three types that I've developed that I'm going to be using with it and uh, just that setting henceforth. Um, I think uh, right now I'm, uh, I'm uh, the, the working title of the setting is uh, Codex Fantasia. Um, and yeah, I have a working title for it finally. Um, and, uh, the three types, I didn't get to, to use them this time. There wasn't enough time to, to convert them, but, uh, for future games, um, it's, uh, the, the soldier, the scholar and the swashbuckler, um, are the cool. three types that I put together for it. Um, and I'm going to look forward to sort of seeing how it goes. Now, of course, we've got a new version of uh, the core sci- You know, we've got the the new core cipher book coming out next uh, next year, maybe. Um, and uh, so that's going to probably affect how things go and uh, how uh, how I may want to retool these. But um, uh, it's mostly. Uh, I mean, the, the the soldier is mostly the same as the warrior type in the. Uh, uh, the core book, and then I did a lot of uh, combining and taking things and uh, taking things out and putting them in for this, for the scholar and the uh, and the swashbuckler. Um, so it's uh, it, they're, so that they're very much their own types. Where it's magic is not overt per se, but you can do a lot with uh, with technology and also with uh, beings with psychic abilities, that kind of thing. And so I'm looking forward to doing more play testing of that. Cool. For uh, cons lately, I've been very big into. So, a lot of us have been gaming for a while. We have nostalgia for certain settings like Dragonlance, uh, Greyhawk, and the, and the such. Um, so, I want to play those, but I don't necessarily want to figure out Thacko in my head anymore. So, what greater thing to do Cypher System? So, at cons, it's so awesome to do a one shot and this uh, worlds that you love with Cypher. So, that's been my big uh, mm. con thing. Uh- a couple years ago at, at Gen Con, I actually ran um, a Warhammer Fantasy Cypher game where I took, you know, all right, we're going to take all the, you know, the, the, the cliched Warhammer. All right, you've got the Witch Hunter, you've got the Dwarf Slayer, you've got the, I mean, and they were just really easy to make. All right, let's cipher and nominations of them. And, you know, it basically re ran through pretty much a, you know, if you've played the, the video game Vermintide, and that was basically what it was. They were in a town that was being attacked by uh, by the Skaven, and sort of like it, it worked real well. So, you know, it was easy to, 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 to put in ciphers and easy to do things like that. But that was just sort of a, you know, you know, coming up with the characters was kind of the hardest part. It was just, or, or just because it's like, if, you, if you're ever creating a, you know, a con game yourself, coming up with the rolling the characters yourself you know you gotta do seven of them or six of them or you know how many you do it's like that's 
that, that, that takes a lot of time. But, you know, other than that, like, the, the game kind of wrote itself after that. It's sort of like, all right, what are we going to do, folks? And sort of put them in a town and sort of let them sort of go nuts with, you know, an escape and attack and sort of, like, fed off the moment of what what what, what set pieces were involved. Neat. Uh, I want... Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, for making characters, just to pl- uh, plug everybody. So if you're making a con game, as you said, Andrew, you have to make seven mm-hmm. characters. It takes a long, a long time. There's a website called fastcharacter.com, and it has the Cypher system book, although you know we don't know if we'll have the, the new updated one. But yeah. it bangs out pre-gen super quick for you if anybody ever needs help with that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. All right, that's cool. I, I'm just wondering for the uh, for when when you're adapting uh, when when you were adapting the other worlds and stuff, were you using um, uh, what what were you using as as far as on the, on the cipher side? Were you just using stuff from the uh, adaptations of the core book, or were you borrowing from one of the one of the worlds that are out or anything like that? Um. Yeah. Well, I was using. I, I think I was using types from. Um, from from the fantasy setting part of the of the of the core book, um, sort of using that, and sort of like picking abilities that sort of fit that that, and just calling it. All right, you're a witch hunter. All right, you're a you're a, a, a priest of uh, uh, Sigmar. You're a fire wizard, whatever they're called again. I forget um, that kind of thing. So it's sort of like, all right, we're you know. So yeah, you sort of pick that. You know, I'm going to choose their abilities. You know, their their you know, sorcerer abilities that are based off of our, you're simply a, a fire wizard. So we're going to pick all, you know, we're going to flavor it all fire wise. So, um, you know, just to fit the theme. So that, that you know, you know, Cypher is really good with that where you can sort of, sort of like, all right, it listed this way. You can retool it to be your kind of, all right, now it's ice rather than a fireball. Now it's a, you know, huge ball of, you know, chilled air kind of thing. So, and you can do that with the, the, the villains as well. Um, I've created a, a Numenera um, one shot and that's um, all about time. Um, and I, I don't have a name of it yet because like, Nick of Time was my first go-to and that's kind of so cheesy what happened. I like it though. But, but it's like all of the, all of the creatures are t- taken from, I think like the, the Numenera, the first bestiary, and the the Atlas are like the, the carnal feeder, which is like this dog like creature that um, exists. You know, can can read the character's mind, so it all it looks like it's it's one step ahead of everybody when you try to do something. It's got this ability to to uh, to go away, but then you also have the, the these other creatures. Oh, no, that's not the carnal feeders. That's the the, the tachy, tachyrons. The, the dog type creatures, the carnal feeders are the ones that are really drawn to to spatial distortion or to time distortion situations. So I've got this whole room set up where it's all all of these, you know, GM intrusion, time distortion things that are going to draw these creatures out to attack them and stuff like that. So this con game, I, I built this for a Gen Con that I've just never been able to run it myself at a Gen Con. So uh, I'm thinking to bring it to to, to Scarab next year. So that was my thought to do that. Where is Scarab? Scarab is in Columbia, South Carolina. Yep. So um, they uh, they reached out to me. Some of my uh, uh, some of my old college friends from our college gaming days are actually you know um, big contributors and runners in, in, in of that. So they they reached out to me and said, "Hey, we really want Numenera uh, present at Scarab this year." So I was like, "All right, I can do that." I'll probably run into the Violet Veil vale and something else that some of the some of the old gen, um, gen con adventures so i haven't quite you know figured out my schedule with that yet so um yeah that's what i plan on doing next year they are really yeah, that's great, so yeah well, i was just gonna say they're really nice people um, oh yeah scarab that's i i've uh, i've been going there for uh, the last few years um and i know um the uh, well, one of the uh, uh, one of their organizers, uh, John Manis, who does the the Scarab Swarmcast, that podcast, um, and uh, who is uh, he's yeah, come up to Mace and done stuff, and uh, then also uh, was uh, was uh, just sort of down there organizing stuff. We would we did some podcast related stuff together, um, and uh, it's. Uh, it's a really cool people. I was just struck, sort of, just uh, how almost uh, how, how almost supernaturally nice everyone was uh, when I went down there. So it was a very good experience from uh, from that perspective. Um, cool. Very different kind I of con. Been yeah. Yet, so I have to figure. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, 
like back in the day they had a a con in Columbia, and I forget what I thought it was called, like Dragon something or what have you. Uh, round con, possibly. Or... Was it Round Con? There was a con that, called Round Con they used to have down there. That yeah. that sounds familiar. Like I, I was, you know, I, I volunteered and took a lot of part in, in Round Con a couple of years. I ran games and, and 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 stuff like that while I was in college. So yeah, that that sounds familiar. Yeah. Cool. So I didn't know if this was kind of like the evolution of that or or completely different people. So. Oh. I've not been to Scarab yet, so I'm excited to see what's yeah. going to be interesting. I think I'm going to run some um, Cypher or Dragon Lance at Total Con in Massachusetts coming in February. We're going to hunt Kender. <laughs> oh, no. It's called the Great Kender Purge. <laughs> no, don't yes, go. Yes, I'm having so uh. fun making the artifacts because they're from Naraka. So mm -hmm. our Cyphers are like, you know, they're from Naraka and they're these evil, nasty little things and just throwing in the, the good old Dragon Lance Crin twist to them. <laughs> I should just mean though. They're poor tender. Oh, well, I'll tell you. Yeah, but they they aren't so nice anymore. Mm, okay. My, my plot makes it so you want to kill him. Although oh. you are playing cool characters, but. Yeah. I I found that, uh, that, that uh, whether or not you want to kill Kendra depends a lot on how they're being played. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been, I've been in a game where a player insisted on playing a Kender, but they were going to play a Kender that was very serious and um, very against the, the, the stereotype of Kender and wanted to be, you know, I'm not the klepto. I'm a very. I'm like, well, why are you playing a Kender? It's, What's the point? <laughs> it's, the, it's the Dridst Kender. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that was his whole deal. It was like, I was like, yeah, but, but you know, it's like, you know, if you're gonna play a dwarf, act like a terrorist little dwarf. If you're gonna play Kender, act like you know, just have fun with, it. like, like lean into it. Don't you know, like, oh, we're gonna be against. It. It's like, Don't yeah. cut off that top knot. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it, it's sometimes it's nice to be able to defy um, yeah, this, you know racial sometimes. stereotypes. Obviously, and true, you know, true. I mean, fantasy that, otherwise, but uh, that, yeah. that's true. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, how you want to kill a Kender depends on how who plays it, how they play it. That's how I feel about paladins. Because I mostly want to what? split over next. <laughs> <laughs> Except for you, my brother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Andrew and I played in a Dragonlance game um, run by David Wilson Brown, and I was getting teary-eyed. I loved our characters and our yeah, like really our charisma that. together so much that like I was getting emotional that first game. Nice, and that was in Cypher. Yeah, her character was yeah, it was Cypher. Her character was um, uh, my character's brother's fiance who died in battle. So. Wow. It was like this whole thing. Like I had to give her the news. It was, yeah. It was, it was, it was a, it was a good game though. Like it was very character driven kind of thing. So it was a lot of fun. I often found so. there's a lot of very deep. Just Dragonlance seems to me has always been very deeply drenched in story for uh, for a lot of the games that come out. There's actually, and I'm I'm going to I, I'm just briefly uh, recommend just since we're talking about it real quick. Uh, if I may divert again briefly, uh, there is a, and I think I've recommended this, uh, this streamer before on here, but uh, 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 Grimjack21502 has had this uh, Dragon, Dragonlance slash Ravenloft game going Ooh. on on his channel on uh, Wednesdays, on Wednesday nights, that has been uh, just magnifique, it has been great. Uh, there's so much uh, story, and it's been, it's had a very kind of creepy atmosphere and the characters are from all over the history of mm -hmm. Dragonlance. They got, because the mists don't care, don't care what yeah. area they pick you up from. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're in that, uh, the, the, the uh, part of uh, Ravenloft that is ruled by Lord Soth. And uh, for folks familiar with that. And it's, uh, it's very interesting to see how they all react to it with all this deep backstory that they have going on. It's uh, really that, cool. That's, that's interesting. Cause it's not the first time that I've seen those two worlds um, be related to each other in, in different things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, back in the day, yeah, like when I, when I was playing Dragonlance as a kid, it was like always like, all right, Dragonlance and Ravenloft for some reason sort of had some kind of connection. Well, I don't remember what. I don't know if there's any lore there or anything well, like that. One, one of the same people <laughs> worked on uh, on both. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, there was some legal controversy there because they took Lord Soth into Ravenloft without the permission of Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, and it turned into a big cluster, I think. 
because there's whole books at Ravenloft about Lord's Lord Soth. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're absolutely mm-hmm. right. Yeah, I remember that now. Okay. Yeah. That that, and it that. Starts to find Kit's soul. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry to tangent. I'll bring it back. Uh, there is a cipher game actually that uh, I do want to. Uh, uh, I, I I'm interested in running at some point if I can gather it together. Um, that I actually am going to be <coughs> trying to trying to to plan with Danny's help at some point um, because uh, it's all about uh, yeah it's all about different kinds of uh, different kinds of cocktails. Uh, it's basically. <laughs> It's, I just have this kind of. It's not even completely fully formed, but the it's a terrible idea, first of all. Uh, but I'm going to try to. Uh, I want to try to do it at a con some at some point. This uh, I, I had I'd heard you recently that um, um, uh, Bonnie Cook Games may be um, adding more to the to the rules for the superhero genre for the cipher cast. Uh, for the cipher cast for the cipher system we are the cipher cast for the cipher <laughs> system um and uh that uh, so i may have to wait until that's in place but um uh, the idea kind of is that uh you know basically different kinds of drinks as ciphers yeah. and mm-hmm. different types of uh different brands or types of drinks as character types in a way in that you personally identify with this kind of drink and tapping into that gives you superpowers. <laughs> I like this idea that, uh, so much. That's strangely away. Go uh, Strangely, they seem to go away when you're completely sober. And uh, <laughs> so there is that question of, is any of it real or is it uh, all in your head? Um, and... Uh, yeah, not, not something that uh, I would. Re- this is perhaps one of those um, uh, uh, things where it's you know don't uh, sh- should anyone play it? It would be more of a uh, just waiting for a disaster to happen type thing, <laughs> which I, I, I am uh, fully endorse. I would very much like to see how that goes. Um, waiting for that dread tower to fall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we definitely need to play test this Gen Con after hours with mm-hmm. the corresponding boozes. Can I call tequila now? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes. <laughs> These will be the end. every time you use a cipher, you got to take a shot. Uh, <laughs> drinking cipher system. Or, 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 or oh, you have it where you know you have all these martini glasses laid out with all of these different color martinis, and you don't know what ciphers yeah. they are, and then you're like, um, oh well, yo, know, you need to use something. So then you're gonna take are you gonna take the blue green concoction or the red, you know gold concoctions so, that, yeah. that may be a thing we may have to try out after hours i'm, I'm gonna try to make it to the next gen to the next gen con i was not at gen con this year but uh, uh just as that disclaimer but next year that's the plan so uh that's yeah that, that should be quite interesting if we manage to pull that off also as a quick disclaimer uh, the cyphercast network does not encourage the abuse of alcohol by any means um this is this is more just a uh a, a, a look into uh, the culture of such things, one might say. <laughs> yeah, in real well, life, please, please drink responsibly. It, Actually, serious, in all seriousness, please drink responsibly. It's different color Kool-Aid. Aid. It's not yeah. actual alcohol. <laughs> I, uh... Thanks. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> Oh, Jim, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, so we, we, we've got to we've got to put our heads together and uh, and come up with that because I know you know far more about this topic than I do. Uh, so it's uh, just a, uh, a, I, I would like to 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 make use of your expertise sometime soon when we figure this out. For the listeners' knowledge, I'm a bartender, so I'm not just a drinker. Although they, you can include that in my resume too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, games we're thinking of running? Cypher games, Numenera? It could happen. You'll never know. <laughs> yeah, you'll, have to, you'll have to come to the cons and see us. Yeah. How is, have you tried running uh, Cypher on Twitch yet? I know you've been running a couple games yourself um, online. I know, you know the Monty Cook uh, folks have been doing a lot themselves um, on the, you know, the digital space. So, um, have you have you tried it yet, Jim? I mean, not yet. Um, that is probably coming up in 2019. Um, mm-hmm. At some point, I'm thinking about doing that. I, I've got to figure out kind of where I want to place things mentally, because I want to yeah. start kicking things up a notch if I can. 
uh, on this channel, and uh, I might, uh, as we, we spoke before about, uh, as I was, I was speaking before about the uh, Codex Fantasia setting that I've been putting together, I might try to do a mini campaign of that at some point. Cool. Um, so I'm looking into that, and then also we might try to do like a, as I do, you know, different months themed for different one shots. Might actually try that with Cipher System one month, and do like uh, something like that, or a Numenera like one week, uh, the Strange another week, that kind of thing. So yeah, let me know if you want my uh, help on running one shots. I, I I very much probably will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be in touch as soon as I figured all that out. <laughs> All right. We'll have to keep everybody posted on all this good stuff. Indeed. Uh, I think we're going to move ahead to our things of interest. And Jim, you had something that you wanted to share. Yeah, one thing I just wanted to briefly mention. Uh, there is a Kickstarter going on right now as of this recording um, that I think folks should check out. And then also, if uh, I, I don't know if uh, they're doing a... Uh, they're, they're doing... Uh, stuff where you can just do more uh, like backer kit stuff with it if you miss the uh, if you miss the Kickstarter, but uh, they might be. Um, so that but, and it'll be available later on anyway. But also, you know, so with that innovation, it's always nice that you can even if you miss a Kickstarter, you don't necessarily have to miss it. But it's called uh, Become the Game of AI Investigation. Um, it is put together uh, by Dylan Grinder. Um, on uh, Twitch, uh, uh, it's uh, they're known as uh, Anarisis, um, and uh, they're running a lot of different uh, types of games. And this looks very interesting. Um, it's basically the idea is that you're each playing a different AI, um, and uh, you solve crimes. That's pretty much the uh, <laughs> the foundation of it. Uh, so that looks very cool. Um, I, I watched. Uh, an actual play that uh, came out recently. Uh, they've been doing a few of them um, on, a, on a few different channels, and it was uh, kind of cool. It was this sort of uh, it was a sort of almost sort of Blade Runner-ish feel to it, um, because then there are questions about you know the character changes in different ways as you progress and as you unlock more things, and so it's uh, it's just interesting to see kind of how each player. Uh, uh, does with them, and so I, I think it's uh, I think it's definitely worth looking into. So it's uh, it's called Become, the game of AI investigation. Go and check that out on Kickstarter. On Kickstarter, if you uh, uh, are within the sound of my voice, because I think you should. And Jim, it's funded now, so that's cool. Yes, yes, it did just fund, Yay. so that was also uh, very cool. So it's definitely happening. Nice. Yeah. Andrew. I've been spending way too much time looking at Kickstarters lately. There's just been so many that I've been out there that I've been like, ooh, this one looks cool. It, it started with, you know, dropping dro dropping money to get myself a black cube finally because I'd missed out the first time. Ah, yes. So this has been, I've been like, ooh, what about this one? Ooh, what about that one? So, you know, I'm still looking at, you know, Things from the Flood is just about to finish Kickstarting. So yes. I'm really excited about that. So um, that looks really cool. Playing a Tales from the Loop kind of game where the kids are, you know, more now high school teenagers and can die sounds really cool because I did ran Tales from the Loop as a Halloween game and the 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 no death mechanic kind of did take a little bit of the the, the, the grease out, you know a little bit of the, the horror mechanic out out of it so mm. um, but it was still a lot of fun game. But um, another thing I've been looking at is, you know, games that RPGs that they're making video games out of. I saw that you were running um, um, Torment Ties of Numenera on your stream there, Mr. Ryan. Yes, yes. I've been playing um, that for a little while now. That, yeah, I've been watching a bit of that, and it seems really cool. I've not been able to get much into the game myself, just a big time commitment with all of the, the role play thingies. Um, it, it becomes hard for me to uh, to make a commitment of, of, of a story and then forget what, what's going on. So being able to watch people is a lot easier for me in some regards. Um, but they also have uh, the uh, the um, Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden game just came out, and that one's a tactical uh, turn-based game that looks really fun, based off of the old you know the Mutant Year Zero world that uh, that uh, Free Liga came out with a couple years back. So I think that's really cool that, you know, 
RPGs are starting to jump genres more often now. So getting into mixed media, it's not just your, you know, not just your your D and D now. I mean, you, you have now a Pathfinder CRPG as well. So mm. that's pretty cool too. Yeah. Oh, Kingmaker. Definitely check out the Kickstarter pages there. All the good stuff too. Andrew going down that black hole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a like. All right, dun- cheap cheap dungeon tiles to cool come up with. Uh, all right, you know, I'm just keep looking at stupid things like that. Like, yeah. all right, I can't afford, you know, Dwarven Forge, but this looks good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that is definitely a singularity I get drawn into on a regular basis, as anyone who follows me on Kickstarter knows. Um, <laughs> uh, it's anytime you dangle like, oh, this type of deck of cards goes in, it's I'm gone. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, even once I've missed, like I missed Forbidden Kingdom with uh, with uh, the Free League of Folk, then I'm like, all right, I went back and rebought it. And I'm like, oh, wait, I didn't get the dice or the deck or the campaign. Now I need to go to Medithi's website and start buying that stuff. Mm. So somehow I become a completionist in that kind of way. <laughs> Don't know why. Mm. Well, I think we've kind of hit on everything tonight there but um if we want to find you guys and see what you're kickstarting and what you're getting into where can we andrew where what are you up to um i am found on twitter at my 20 sided life and on my website my 20 sided life.com though my website has been kind of down for a while i've been meaning to get back to it just life's been kicking me in the butt lately so um, spending all day at work in front of a computer makes it hard for me to write. So, mm-hmm. don't know why, but just want to come home and bitch. <laughs> I need to get back to it. But you write some damn good blogs, so. Uh... I, I did enjoy. I got to get back to writing some some uh, some set pieces. I had a lot of fun with those. So. Please do. Mm-hmm. So, we'll try. Jim, we'll try. Yes. Tim, what about you? Well, uh, if you're watching live, this is my channel. Um, I am Other Doc on both Twitch and Twitter. That's O T H E R D O C. Uh, on Friday, I am continuing my playthrough of Torment Tides of Numenera, uh, wandering through Sagus Cliffs and uh, reading reams and reams of dialogue. Um, uh, so far, it's delightful. Uh, on Saturday mornings, I play We Happy Few. And then I'm doing RPGs. Uh, not this weekend, but every other Saturday afternoon, we're playing in a campaign of the Cold Ruins of Last Life, which is a setting for a dungeon world where we're all undead. Uh, then on Sundays, I do one-shots of different RPGs. Uh, this month, we're playing Dirty Secrets, which is a zero-prep game that takes on the detective genre. And uh, then later this month, we'll have a couple of games of My Life with Master, uh, where everyone plays minions uh, working for the kind of villain you'd find in a Universal Monster movie or, uh, or Hammer Horror films. Uh, the second of those will be Christmas-themed, because uh, it's happening around Christmas. Uh, the minions will be elves, reindeer, winter spirits, and such, and the Master will be a rather famous compulsive gift giver in a red suit. Uh, so, You're not gonna have Krampus. I mean, <laughs> Krampus could be one of the characters potentially. Um, <laughs> oh, that's true. I guess that'd be the other way around. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, if that's not silly enough, then uh, at the end of the month, I'm running a hack of Lady Blackbird that uh, mashes up Shakespeare and Star Wars. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm very much looking forward to all of that. Uh, I still have a few slots open for those last few games I just mentioned, so if you're interested, I have a link to sign-ups down below on my Twitch page, or you can go to my website at jimyesthatjim.com, where I have links to that and my various other audio and writing projects. Very good. Yay! Uh, I've got to play in some Jim's games on Twitch, and they're a lot of fun, so definitely please check them out. I am Danny, and I can be found on Twitter at Imperial Scum. I stream every uh, Tuesday night on the Greyhawk channel. I run a game set in Greyhawk in the Great Kingdom during the Great Greyhawk Wars. So things go really bad, and it's a pretty dark game. I love running it. I have such an awesome table. I'm also a player on that channel, the Greyhawk channel on Twitch, on Sunday nights where we do Return to Greyhawk, which is their flagship game. It started the whole channel, and it's... It's epic. It is an epic game. I am also do a podcast called Tales of Blood and Stone, which is a Shadow of the Demon Lord actual play. Uh, definitely mature reading. It is dark as dark can be, but it is glorious in all its disgustingness. And always have my hands in something. So if you just check me out at Twitter, at Imperial Scum, you will certainly find what I'm doing. 
All right. So thank you, everybody, for listening. And congratulations. You've reached the end of yet another episode. You can email us at info at cyphercast.net. You can follow us on Twitter at cyphercastnet. We're on Twitch on the first Thursday of each month on twitchtv.com slash other doc, where you can also find videos on demands of previous shows. The po- this podcast is available on the Cyphercast Network blog at cyphercast.net, as well as iTunes and Google Play. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you next time on the Cyphercast. Farewell. Bye. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>